Hey guys, how are you doing today? I hope you are doing amazing and fantastic and wonderful. So today's video is all about the chapter one reading of the February's Cozy Escape book club pick for February, which is Tart of Darkness by Denise Swanson. I am going to be reading chapter one and Lisa is going to be reading chapter two over on her channel. So once you're done watching my video of chapter one, go on over to her channel and watch her reading of chapter two. Super, super excited about this book. It looks fantastic. It's actually on sale or it was when I bought it on Kindle. It was on sale for like three or four dollars or something along those lines. I've been reading a lot of my books via on my Kindle. Um, in January I read all of my books on my Kindle so that's sort of how I'm like flowing recently but without further ado let's get into the tart of darkness the tantalizing odor of pumpkin spice scented the air as Danielle Sloan watched her neighbor Ivy Drake stuff leftover Halloween cookies into her mouth Danny had gone a little overboard trying out new recipes for the holiday, and as usual, Ivy had volunteered to handle the excess treats, of course. Danny was nearly a dozen years older than Ivy, who, having skipped two grades, was an 18-year-old junior at a local university. But over the past few months, the two of them had drifted into a sort of big sister-little sister relationship. Ivy seemed to prefer hanging out with Danny to partying with friends closer to her own age. Most evenings, she ended up in Danny's apartment, chowing down on whatever Danny had cooked that day while they both watched Cupcake Wars or Hell's Kitchen. Danny wasn't sure exactly why she enjoyed having the girl around, but her old psychology professor would probably claim that it was because of Danny's deep-seated desire for siblings. She had begged her parents for brothers and sisters, but all they'd come up with to assuage her only child loneliness had been a stupid goldfish Wait, named, wait for it, Goldie. What are these? Ivy interrupted Danny's thoughts, gesturing with one hand to the cookie she was holding in the other. Mystic macaroons, Danny eyed the confections critically. I'm not sure if I should have added the chopped candy corn or not. You definitely should. Candy corn is delish. A hand, corn's a vegetable, which makes these cookies good for you. It's a win-win, Ivy assured her. Then licked her fingers and added, I'm so glad you quit your job. My roomies and I were dying of starvation before you started cooking for us. The only time we ever got a decent meal was if Uncle Spence took us out to eat, and I was beginning to feel like we were mooching off of him too often. I'm sure he enjoys the chance to spend time with you, Danny said, squirming until her back rested against the arm of her wool worn play plaid sofa. So I hope you still go to supper with him. She had never met Spencer Drake, but Ivy had mentioned that after retiring from a career in law enforcement in August, her uncle had taken a job as the head of the university's security department. Danny pictured him as a lonely old ex-cop watching reruns of Law & Order as he ate his solitary meal off a TV tray. Oh, we never turned down a free meal. Ivy wrinkled her nose, but your cooking is wicked. Thanks. Living in an apartment building full of college kids, Danny was fluent in the native lingo and interpreted Ivy's statement as a compliment. I'm happy you like it because I'm thrilled to get the food out of my kitchen. She flicked a disapproving glance down at her curvy hips and belly pooch. Otherwise, I'd eat it all myself. Her shoulders dropped. It's not as if there's a guy in my life for me to feed. You were right to dump Dr. McCreepy. Ivy shot her a sympathetic glance. You're nobody's sidekick. Sadly, that's not correct. He might have told me I was his girlfriend, but I was just his fill-in. Danny mess massaged the back of her neck. Thinking about her ex, Dr. Kip Newson, always made her tense. It's hard to believe that I didn't realize he was engaged to someone else. Who would have guessed he'd have two Facebook accounts? Me, Ivy's expression, was a mixture of pride and guilt. Sorry I had to be the one to tell you, but I'm not sorry I checked him out. I knew that loser was up to something when he claimed he worked every weekend. I figured as the newest doctor hired in the emergency room, he got the worst shifts, Danny defended herself, knowing it wasn't the complete truth. In reality, she had known something was off when her ex, but for once, her father had been proud of her and she didn't want to give up the guy who had finally won her dad's approval. He had been more impressed when she'd introduced him to Kip than when she graduated from college, summa cum laude. 
Her dad was delighted that Danny was dating such a handsome, successful man, and she hadn't wanted to acknowledge that there could possibly be anything wrong with their relationship. However, in her heart, Danny always believed it was too good to be true. There was no way someone like Kip Newson would really be interested in someone like her. A less than beautiful, less than thin, corporate drone whose greatest achievement was a perfectly risen souffle. And all her fantasies about the future with him had shattered when Ivy exposed him as the selfish, heartless, egotistical ass that he was. Danny had never been able to live up to her father's standards of beauty and charm. In her dad's eyes, she didn't come close to her mother's perfection. But living up to the memory of the gorgeous woman he'd loved and lost at such a young age was an impossible goal for his daughter to meet. Breaking into Danny's depressing thoughts, Ivy said, When Dr. Detestable threw such a fit when you posted a picture of the two of you, I knew he was hiding something. You're right. Danny swallowed the painful lump in her throat. And working in human resources, I certainly should have thought to investigate his social media presence more thoroughly. Speaking of which, Ivy popped a third or maybe fourth cookie in her mouth, then mumbled, Last week, when you announced that you had turned in your resignation, you never said why you were bailing on your job. It's hard to explain, Danny paused, distracted by Ivy's moans of appreciation at the cookie's peanut butter and coconut flavor. Finally, Danny said, I really didn't have much of a choice. I had to resign. I was turning into someone I hated. She paused, thinking about the reason behind the reason, the one she couldn't share with Ivy. Even if she hadn't signed a non-disclosure agreement, she wouldn't have told her young friend about what she'd been forced to do. Although she'd resisted the CEO's direct or directive to dissolve an entire de department and sweep a scandal under the rug. In the end, she'd gone ahead and followed the orders that she knew were morally wrong, something she'd never allow herself to do again. Oh, Ivy tilted her head. Who were you turning into that was so bad? A sycophant. Danny spit out the words as if they were covered in slime. Huh? Ivy's confused expression morphed into an accusing glare. You just made up that word. I swear it's a real word. Danny hit her smile. Ivy was brilliant in the sciences, technology, and math, but her vocabulary lagged behind. Searching her mind for a relatable example, Danny said, it means acting like someone's minion. Oh, Ivy nodded sagely. But how do you know you'd been minionized? Danny chuckled and then explained. It was pretty damn clear when I was burned out. I mean, what kind of person hears that over the weekend their boss died of a heart attack and their first thought is, gee, I guess we won't be having our usual Monday morning chew out session after all. Yeah, even if the guy was a hater, that was cold. Ivy used her tongue to rescue a crumb from the corner of her lip and frowned, which isn't like you at all. That's what worried me. At that moment, I knew if I'd stayed, I'd only become more of a corporate zombie. Danny blew out a breath. Originally, I thought by being in HR, I could make a difference in people's lives, welcome new employees, solve problems, make the company stronger. But that didn't happen. Ivy played with one of the bright pink wisps of hair scattered among her long bronze strands. Probably because I was working for the, young, for the wrong firm, Danny confessed. There's so much employee turnover. All I ever got to do was review resumes. After my inappropriate reaction to my boss's death, the more I thought about it, the more I realized that I couldn't stand to read one more stupid response on a job application. Like the one you told me about, Ivy giggled. The guy who circled no to the have you ever been arrested question and then felt the need to explain. Exactly. Danny rolled her eyes. He was doing so well until he got to the next question. Who knew a single word like why would trip up someone so badly? If he would have just ignored it. But for some reason he filled in the blank with never been caught. Both women laughed until they were gasping for air. They were still breathless when the doorbell rang. Do you think we're being too loud? Ivy asked, swallowing the last of her giggles. Mrs. Edwards keeps reminding us of the no noise clause in our lease. In an apartment building full of college students, I doubt the manager would consider us her biggest problem. Danny patted her friend on the shoulder and then headed down the hallway. Danny looked out the peephole and saw a young man dressed in a dark uniform wearing a baseball cap that read Guardian Delivery Service. Raising her voice, she said, may I help you? I have a package for Danielle Sloan. Ivy had followed Danny to the foyer and she snickered. Have you been ordering kitchen stuff from the food channel again? Danny shook her head, unlocked the deadbolt, and opened the door for a few inches. You need to sign for it, ma'am. The delivery man thrust the digital clipboard through the gap. 
Danny scrawled her signature and the guy handed her an envelope with confidential stamped on both sides. Thanking him, she locked up and returned to the sofa. What is it? Ivy stood in front of her, bouncing like she was doing a Tigger imitation. Having become so used to Ivy's extreme noisiness, Danny didn't miss a beat as she answered, it's from a local law firm. Aren't you going to look inside? Ivy dropped down beside Danny. I guess so. Danny's heart was racing. Was her ex-employer coming for her? She would kept her part of the bargain. She hadn't said a word to anyone about the real basis for her resignation. Then do it before I die of curiosity, Ivy demanded. Frowning, Danny slid her finger beneath the sealed flap and ripped it open. After a quick scan of the letter, she said, It seems I've inherited a house and the attorney for the deceased would like to meet me at my earliest convenience. Danny's pulse raced. A house? She now owned a house? What? Ivy's shrill scream sounded like a tea kettle boiling over. From who? Someone called Geraldine Cook. Danny crinkled her brow, searching her mind for any memory of the name. Where's the house at? Danny scanned the next paragraph. It says it's the. It says that it's in one of the older Normalton neighborhoods and fairly close to the university. Which one? Mine? Got me. Danny twitched her shoulders. There was more than one college in Normalton, Illinois, and she was geographically challenged. North, south, east, west didn't mean a lot to her. Why did this Geraldine person leave it to you? Ivy narrowed her bright eyes. I have no idea. Danny finished reading the attorney's letter and then turned to the handwritten note attached to the last page. Here's a letter from Mrs. Cook. What does it say? Danny started reading loud. Dear Daniela, your grandmother, Catherine Stone, and I were both members of Alpha Sigma Alpha Sorority. We pledged together and became best friends. That's the grandma who died when you were really young, right? Ivy asked. Uh-huh. Danny drew her legs up and hugged her knees. I barely remember her. My parents never talk about her much because of some sort of feud between her and my mom. But your mom died nearly 15 years ago. Didn't your father talk about his mother then? Nope. Dad's a world champion grudge holder and still refuses to discuss grandma to this day. Danny's lips thinned. I don't even have a picture of her. Danny's chest tightened. Maybe I'll find some among Mrs. Cook's possessions. Ivy got up and started heading for the kitchen, calling over her shoulder. Why would your grandmother's friend leave you her house? She came back a few seconds later with a can of Diet Coke in her hand. Danny shrugged and continued reading from Geraldine Cook's note. Catherine and I made a promise to look after each other's families. Danny swallowed a lump in her throat. She wished Geraldine had contacted her while she was still alive. It would have been nice to meet someone who knew her grandmother. I was widowed several years ago and did, I didn't have any children. My closest relative is a third cousin who I haven't heard from in the past 10 years. So, she left you her fortune, Ivy screamed. I wouldn't go that far, Danny smiled ruefully. According to the attorney's letter, the place is an old mansion that is currently undergoing an unfinished rehab. Why was the elderly, why was an elderly lady without a family remodeling a big old house? Ivy sank down. Was she planning to sell it? The attorney said she was turning it into a bed and breakfast, but she got sick before it was completed. Danny picked up the lawyer's letter and then ran her fingers down the page, stopping when she found the description of the property. It's a 17 room Italianate style Victorian. Geraldine had a com complete had completely renovated the top floor where she was living and was in the process of having the five bedrooms on the second level modernized for guests. What are you going to do with the place? Ivy asked. Since I only just found out about it, I don't really have a plan yet. Danny chuckled and then continued thoughtfully. There are enough uh, hotels and inns around here already. And besides, I'm not too keen on having strangers constantly checking in and out of my home. She blew out a long breath and then added, plus there's the taxes and everything. With my savings and investments, I've, I have a fairly decent cushion to tide me over until I find another job, but not enough to support a mansion, especially one that might take a lot of money to make operational as a B&B. I'll probably just sell it. What's left to do on the remodel? Ivy finally popped her, opened her can of soda and took a long swig. It looks as if three of the suites are completely finished. The kitchen has been totally gutted and remodeled and passed inspection to prepare and serve food, Danny admitted. That leaves two guest rooms partially renovated in the carriage house, which hasn't been touched. So you could move into the house and run it while you fix up the rest, Ivy pinned Danny with a, cold, with a hard stare. Probably, but... But it would be a waste of my education, Danny chewed, her hearing her father's lect voice lecture about her foolish ideas. 
Have you sent out any resumes, Ivy Press? Not exactly. Danny didn't meet her friend's eyes. I was going to do that this afternoon, but then I found this new recipe and, and you got distracted, Ivy finished for her and then said, maybe now that you're going to own a place with a fabulous kitchen, instead of looking for a new HR job, you could open your own catering business. I need a salary, not a boat boatload of debt, Danny doused the flicker of interest Ivy's suggestion had stirred up. Besides, I'm probably not good enough to be a professional. You are too. Even if I had the skills, I'm not sure I'm interested in doing that sort of work. Seriously, Ivy squealed. You watch cooking shows like sports fans watch football. I do not, Danny's cheeks burned. Yes, you do. Ivy poked Danny in the arm with her index finger. You yell stuff like, that's too much lemon juice, idiot. And are you blind? Those scallops need two more minutes. I've done that once, Danny refused to meet Ivy's stare. Once, Ivy raised a brow, but when Danny remained silent, she shrugged and said, I better bounce, my homework isn't gonna do itself. Grabbing another cookie, Ivy paused with her hand on the doorknob and then chided. Anyway, I'm just saying, you're an awesome chef. With Ivy gone, Danny turned around, turned on the television. After flipping through a couple hundred channels without finding anything that caught her attention, she shut it off. Staring at the blank screen, she considered her existence. She closed her eyes and visualized what her life had been like a few months ago. She had a well-paying professional position, a handsome boyfriend, and a bright future. Levering herself off the sofa, she started to pace. She had vowed not to think of her ex or her resignation or the fact that she'd turned 29 yesterday. Thank goodness Ivy and her roommates didn't know about Danny's birthday. If they had, they would have wanted to throw her a party and Danny wasn't in the celebratory mood, especially since her father apparently had forgotten the day his only child was born. He hadn't even sent his usual impersonal greeting card, or maybe he had remembered but was still angry at her for breaking up with Kip. It couldn't be because she'd quit her job. She hadn't worked up the courage to tell him about that yet. What, with her, what would her dad say if instead of finding a new spot in a new HR department, Danny did as Ivy suggested and started her own company. Cooking had always been her first love. She wanted to go to culinary school, but her father had refused to pay for anything other than what he termed a real degree. In the silence, Danny heard the loud ticking of the vintage Gilbert wall clock hanging in the apartment's tiny foyer. Suddenly, it sounded as if it were counting off the seconds of her life. Coming to a full stop, Danny stood frozen. She was 29 freaking years old. It was past time to stop trying to please her father and start living for herself. So that was the first chapter of Tart of Darkness. Go over to Lisa's channel and listen to chapter two. Super excited to see you guys on February 12th, I think, for our cozy um, chit chat about the different types of cozy mysteries. And then for book club, the last Wednesday of the month, it'll be on my channel at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. I hope you guys have an amazing day. That's the end of this chapter of Court Tagonist. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, guys, happy reading. Bye.